Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder channel and in this video I'd like to continue our quest for how you can link up a solid fuel boiler, wood burner, that kind of thing to an existing central heating system. We've talked about various methods in the past. I also did a thing on pumping water which is very important because that explains about the neutral point and the neutral point is really key to this whole thing. So in this video I'd like to talk to you about the Dunsley neutralizer which basically moves that neutral point to a handy little unit here it doesn't look quite like that this is a schematic drawing that I did basically what you'd be looking at if you looked at it from the top is a barrel like that possibly or you can get one that sits on the wall which is a square unit with lots of tappings in it to put your pipes in basic principle of the neutralizer is exactly the same in both cases We've got a solid fuel boiler here. We need to keep that solid fuel boiler open vented because it doesn't have good control over the heat. It can heat up if the wind blows and you've got a, a load of fuel on it. It can suddenly be a roaring fire. There is a possibility of it boiling. So we need to vent this boiler to atmosphere. And the way we would do that in many cases, we would just put a vent pipe carrying on up here into the loft over the top and we'd have a little feed and expansion tank in the loft. And that would be our cold feed into the system. So we had a way of the boiling water escaping into the tank in there and colder water coming down into the system to replace it. Variations on that, we could have put that vent pipe over here and done it there but just for sake of argument we put it there the principle is exactly the same we're open vented we've got no interruptions we've got no valves or pumps or anything on that system between the boiler and the open vent so that's a very important principle that is the open vented system and that's exactly what you need in any kind of solid fuel appliance where does the neutralizer come into it well we want to link up a central heating system to this solid fuel boiler but we don't want to be sucking water out of the boiler, out of the system. So what we do is we have this very clever little tank. Basically, that's all it is, is a tank with a lot of tappings on it, made out of steel probably. So the water is going up here and it's going, it's gravity circulating. And I explained about gravity circulation, the difference in the weight of water as water is heated. It's made less dense, therefore it becomes lighter and the colder water will push, will displace the hot water out of the boiler. So gravity circulation works very, very well, so long as you keep the whole thing in vertical columns. So we've got gravity circulation going round and it's entering this chamber here, this reservoir of water, which is the Dunsley neutralizer. Now that becomes our neutral point for the system. With that in mind, we now have hot water in here and we've got that gravity circulating up into a cylinder it's going through the coil in the cylinder and back down and through that doesn't mix up with the rest of the water that's in the cylinder which is around here and obviously when it gets to the top it would be hotter but that's coming out through a pipe that has also got a vent on it and that is going off to our taps or our shower in this case. Let's have that as a shower. So that's our hot water supply to the house through the cylinder. It's pushed out of the cylinder by a cold water supply that goes in there that is fed from a tank in the loft. Because water will find its own level, you've got water pushing out of there. The water level will be the same in the top of that vent pipe as it is in the top of that tank. So we've got a gravity circulation going round our coil, going back in here, and it's going down back into our boiler. And by the way, this is all 28 mil pipe work. It's important that you use a good size pipe work, 28 mil copper pipe work on that, not plastic, copper, because we can't control the heat. 28 mil pipe work gives you a good gravity circulation in most domestic boilers. Don't try and do it with 22 and don't ever try and do it with 15. So we've got a good circulation going around there, but because it's a bit sluggish, maybe this system is slightly elongated. We haven't been able to get this directly above the boiler. We've put a pump on the boiler to assist in the gravity circulation. So that what that pump is doing is that pump is pushing water there's the direction and it's pushing water back down into the boiler and that in turn is taking it up and into the neutralizer. Because this is the neutral point, it's only sucking water from there into there and everything else that it's doing is pushing that water around the system. We put 
a thermostat on the flow pipe here, just a clip on thermostat around the pipe. And that thermostat is linked up, set at 60 degrees Celsius, and it's linked up to that pump. When the water in the boiler gets hot, the pump will kick in and it will speed up the water flow through the boiler just to assist us. Now you wouldn't necessarily need that if all you were doing was heating up your domestic hot water there. But what we want to do in this system is we want to put some radiators on the system. So the radiators would be on their own circuit. You can imagine there are several radiators, it doesn't really matter. So out of the top of here, there are plenty of tappings on this Dunsley neutralizer. So we would put one coming out of here and we would go around the central heating circuit and we would come back. We've got a nice little circuit going around here. And again, we would operate that on a thermostat. We would make sure that the water was hot enough in the system when it got hot in here, we could put a thermostat on here or possibly on here. It would kick in and it would pump the water around the radiators when there was enough water in there. But of course it wouldn't do anything to suck the water out of this existing system. This arrangement here would increase the flow rate through the boiler, but because we've got a neutral point here, we would need to put another pump on the system round here and that one we would link up to a thermostat in our house, a room thermostat, but also it would have to know that there was enough hot water in there. So we'd need a thermostat on there to say that that was ready to pump hot water into our radiators. So we've got our radiators fitted, we've got our solid fuel boiler. The one thing we're missing here is our gas boiler or our oil boiler. Okay, so that's the hot water taken care of, but we got the central heating system which is running off this one boiler, but we wanna put another boiler in here because um, we wanna multi-fuel it. What we can do with this very, very simply is we can put another boiler in wherever we like into this system. We don't need to gravity flow it, so we could, for its sake of argument, we could put a boiler up here, just on the wall, upstairs, anywhere we've got in the airing cupboard. And all we need to do is put ourselves a flow into the neutralizer and a return into the boiler. It gets a bit messy, but I'm sure you could work it out in a much neater way. So there's the boiler feeding into the neutralizer, feeding into the central heating system. None of the other things are affected by it. So what we need to do is we need to set the thermostat that is on the boiler is set at a lower temperature than the one on the wood burner. So if the wood burner was working, the gas boiler or the oil boiler or anything like that wouldn't actually need to come on. It would only come on if the temperature here dropped sufficiently that it needed to boost it up a bit. And because we've got this neutralizer here, we're not sucking water through any of the other systems. They're all working independently of each other. So that's all very well, but what if we want to put something like a combi boiler onto the system or something like that? Well, in that case, we would need a thermal store. Now, this is our thermal store cylinder. It's a, a cylinder which has got an open vent system on it. So we're still safe as far as our boiler goes. We've got water coming up through our boiler and it's going into an open vent there and down back into the cylinder. So it's perfectly safe. We're replenishing the water in the boiler. If it boils over, it escapes. So if we wanted to put some kind of sealed system boiler onto the system, no open venting on it, it's just a conventional boiler. We can do that simply by running that boiler through the coil in the cylinder. And if you like, that will be just like having another radiator on the system. So the water would come through the coil in the cylinder and pick up heat from the wood burner. And if we set the thermostats right, this boiler wouldn't come on because it would be getting water from the system and feeding it back in. So we can put the radiators on the system and we can feed the system from the thermal store. It's picking up the water and the boiler wouldn't necessarily kick in unless the heat on this died down and then it kicked in to take some of its water away. But you wouldn't be getting a situation where you were sucking water out of this boiler unless you got a reverse circulation going through it. There are many, many devices. One of these thermal store cylinders capable of linking up a solid fuel boiler and an existing boiler set you back around two and a half thousand quid, but they're very, very good. It's my favorite way of doing it. You can also do it with a much smaller unit and possibly a cheaper unit, which is a dual system 
and it has two plate heat exchangers in it. And those plate heat exchangers will run across. You can even put an unvented cylinder on it so we can link one of these up to the solid fuel boiler and we can link the other one up to our central heating system that will be over here and our existing boiler. Inside here we've got exactly the same thing as we've got here. We've got a coil inside a reservoir of water but it's a smaller unit and the reason that I think the plate heat exchangers are maybe sometimes not as good is because they do suffer from scaling up. So if you live in a hard water area, a plate heat exchanger will need descaling a lot more often than something like a thermal store. Basically, the principle is the same. It depends how much room you've got to put it in. This is a little bit more compact, if you like. It's got pumps in there and all sorts of little controls, but they all do the same thing. In other words, what we've got is hydraulic separation on the systems that means that we can keep our open vented system, but we can also have our sealed system in place. Now, as I said, there are many, many systems out there and I'm not gonna go into them because you can see my drawing skills aren't that good and it uh, starts to get a bit complicated, but that's the general principle. And we're gonna put some links to some of those different systems and hopefully we can get some of the people like Mixergy and so on to uh, come in and talk to us about their particular systems because they're all quite fascinating and they do extend the boundaries of what you can do with multi-fuel systems. To bring your fuel bills down, which is what it's all about. I'm Roger Pisby, come back and see us soon and uh, I'd love to have, know your thoughts on all this. I'm sure you'll be commenting below if you've got something to add to it and hopefully we'll all learn more.